welcome uh, to this episode of A Shepherd's View. Since I began The Shepherd's View, uh, probably about 13 months ago, it would have been the, uh, about the uh, middle of March um, in 2020, I began to uh, do this on a five-day basis. Uh, it was a very difficult time, and we were uh, attempting to minister and to bring about uh, just a sense of hope and encouragement during that time. And along the way, uh, finally we began to kind of open up and somewhere in mid-June, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but uh, uh, we dropped this from uh, this time from five down to two times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, I have done somewhere in the neighborhood between 130 and 140. I kind of tried to count them all up and I couldn't find everything, but anyway, I've done a bunch of these in the last uh, 13 months. So as I look ahead and things begin to open up even more in my pastoral care responsibilities and other activities begin to come into play, I uh, just want to let you know that this here is going to be a regular occasion. It's going to be Tuesdays. It'll be my devotional time. Uh, I'm going to be cutting out the Thursday one. And so we'll be doing this uh, once a week on Tuesdays. And it'll be aired at 9 o'clock in the morning on 195 and also at 7 p.m. on 195. And also you're welcome to... Uh, to go to sunnysidevillage.org, click on the media tab, and scroll down and uh, you'll notice there right underneath the go live button is a archive button. And you can click on the archives. You can watch these at any time and uh, pull it up. Uh, they're about always ready the day of broadcast. They're already on there. Uh, a lot of times it's on before. We even, uh, this even goes on for broadcast, so you can get a peek or a sneak view of it. But we're going to, we're going to do that. We're going to keep these to Tuesdays. Kind of get, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm trying, I'm working very hard to get my life back to uh, a little more of a doable pace. So hopefully you'll go with me on that. Well, today's, um, today's lesson has to do with words. As we begin to work our way out of this uh, pile of rubble that we call COVID that's uh, over this last year that we continue to uh, scramble over uh, stuff and through stuff and in stuff, uh, we continue to come out of this. But I believe it's important that we take care to watch our words. Uh, there's been a lot of strong feelings and opinions that have surfaced this last year about things that we should or shouldn't have done. Uh, feelings about masks. <laughs> I didn't know face masks could have such strong feelings. Vaccines. Wow. There are some strong feelings about vaccines out there. Political directions. Oh my. Did that ever get contentious? Still is. Who are you going to be with? The size of the crowds. The distancing. What should open and how much? Well, you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of touchy subjects, even on a good day, but now during this time, even more so. Our scripture today, uh, a couple scriptures, one in Proverbs and one in James, and I'm telling you, you, we could have dozens of scriptures on this, but we'll just do this one. This one's out of the, uh, the uh, New English version here. It says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Let me share that one more time. It's Proverbs 12, verse 18. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 12, verse 18. <laughs> I love this story. I'm throwing this in here. Uh, several years ago, a professor of the university uh, Pennsylvania was known for giving boring, cliche-ridden lectures. Imagine that. At the beginning of one semester, an innovative class breathed new life into his course by assigning baseball plays to each overused phrase. For instance, 
whenever he said, on the other hand, that was a base hit. By the same token, was a strikeout. And when he said, and so on, was a stolen base. Well, divided into two teams by the center aisle of the lecture hall, the students throughout the term played inning after inning of silent but vigorous baseball. On the last day of class, the impossible happened. The score was tied, the bases were loaded, and the batter hit a home run. The winning team stood and cheered wildly. Though deeply appreciative, the professor was quoted later as having wondered why only one half of the students had been enthusiastic <laughs> about his lectures. I love that story. Oh boy. I, it, it reminds me of the story of the professor that dreamed he was teaching and woke up and he was. <laughs> anyway, it's easy for us to forget about the effect of our words and how they affect others. They can lift up, tear down, or as many of the professor's students learned, bore to death. <laughs> the Bible treats the tongue as the most important organ in the body, something that can do great and be great, but also something that can do great damage. James tells us in chapter 3, beginning with verse 8, it says this, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Dear one, know the day that your words have the power to breathe life into someone else's day. Well, I hope you'll take this. Think about it. Think about what comes out of your mouth this day. I know I have to do it all the time. <laughs> and um, realize that the words of our mouth bring life, bring death, bring encouragement or discouragement, brings a lot of things, but it's what comes out of our mouth. So think about what you're going to say today. Think closely. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we offer this very simple prayer. Guard the words of our mouths guard us today. May the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you and uplifting to others. May there be wisdom and encouragement in the words that we share. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.